Hi there. This is Dr. John Whitcomb talking about cerebrolysin in your brain. Now, cerebrolysin isn't a peptide that's being manufactured like many of other peptides. It's actually derived from pig brains, just like insulin. For the first 50 years of its life, insulin was mostly extracted from pig pancreases. And remember, insulin is a peptide. It's 51 amino acids long. Well, cerebrolysin is actually a collection of four peptides, of which the most important is BDNF, brain-derived neurotropic factor. But there's also CTNF and neurotropic growth factor, NGF, which actually earned a Nobel Prize way back in the 50s. Uh, there's, so these four peptides, you could go on day long on the details. That's not the purpose here. The purpose of this memo is to tell you that we now have a mechanism by which we can repair injury, like concussions. Now, head injury is one of the most leading causes of early death before age 40. And just about everybody who plays sports ends up getting a concussion. Uh, this column has reviewed how 10 headers in soccer will show a difference in memory. Uh, and in the news every day, there's news about football or other contact sports having concussion injuries. But cerebrolysin contains the neurotropic factors that help your brain to re-hook up after trauma. So when you have a shock wave from a concussion, that instantaneous shock wave disconnects some of the trillions of connections between every nerve cell in your brain. And there's just thousands, or there's trillions of them. Um, and that's what the basis of your, what we call memory. We have yet to figure out quite the nuance of all of it, but we know that's the basis of it. And certainly one of the hallmarks of a concussion is that people lose their memory and can't remember what happened. Now your brain is pretty good at, at re recycling itself and getting back and reprogramming itself, getting things in place. But we now know that concussions can be helped immeasurably with cerebral lysin. Uh, the tricky thing is it takes an injection with a syringe. It takes a CC, but you can inject into tummy fat. There's also emerging literature that cerebral lysin is good with Alzheimer's. Um, there's some early studies suggesting it's quite useful. These things are being used heavily in, in Asia. It's not really caught on yet in America. But I currently have one person who's getting cerebral lysin every single day for a concussion. It was 10 days later, and he still couldn't remember the events of the day before. Uh, so we started him on cerebral lysin. I have several clients who have Alzheimer's, a couple who have Parkinson's, who are trying it to see if they can get better. And I think we're going to find what the dose might be and what the interval might be. But these are neurotropic factors that are in the normal human brain. So we're not giving you a foreign substance. We're simply giving you the growth factors, the peptides, the messengers that tell your brain to do what you want it to do. And something like a concussion is where you simply don't have the ability to do that right. What will work for me? Oh, this is easy. If I ever get a concussion, I'm finding whoever I can find to make sure I'm getting cerebral lysin every day. Uh, Five milligrams IV twice a week, uh, one milligram a day. Those are varieties of doses that are being used. Uh, but I'm going to make sure I get it, and I'll find it. Hope this is the first time you hear about it, but it's not the last. Looking forward to hearing a further discussion. This is Dr. John Whitcomb on News and Nutrition on Cerebral Lysin and Your Brain.